presented by Church Tech U. It's the ProPresenter Show. On today's show, how to use SMPTE timecode files to sync devices in ProPresenter 7. Hi and welcome again to the ProPresenter Show. This is the show where I teach all about ProPresenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. And before we get started, if you've ever wanted to send a signal from one device over to another device and have them sync in a frame accurate way, go ahead, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, all that fun stuff. So beginning with ProPresenter 7.10, we have the ability to control timelines with SMPTE timecode. So let me back up just a second. Real quick, what you need to know is video is divided into so many frames per second. So standard definition video was 30 frames a second. High definition video can be 30 frames a second, but it's often 60 or more. Uh, film was 24 frames a second, etc. So back in the film days, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this, they discovered a way to save the audio file, save an audio file with a certain sound that makes it obvious when it's going from one frame to another so that you can sync things up later. So now we can use that same file information in order to sync, let's say, um, the audio from uh, Ableton Live with ProPresenter and its video components. So and it would be frame accurate, so it's not just it's sending a MIDI cue, it's actually right spot on. So let's head over to my computer and I'll talk just a little bit how you might want to do this. So here we are in ProPresenter, and the first thing I'm going to do is show you that I have a timeline that I've made, and right here, if I uncheck timeline, I've got traditional control over it. But when I check timeline, and if you want to learn more about the timeline, I'll leave a link to the um, I'll leave a link to the tutorial I released not too long ago uh, with this video. So when we click on time code here, that tells us that we're controlling this timeline with time code. Well, how do we get the signal into ProPresenter? First thing we need to do is go to View and then Time Code. And if we click this little gear up here, you'll notice that you need to select an audio device. This is the audio device that's receiving the audio file. The way I'm doing this is not ideal, but I just wanted to show it to you. Um, I'm actually um, sending the audio from the music see music right here in uh, so that's just playing a regular wave file that I generated here in on the web at LTC2 sounds kind of like R2D2 and I'm betting that that's where they came up with the idea so set the frame rate to uh, the appropriate frame rate here, the sample rate, bit depth to the appropriate rate, and then set your duration to however long you want it to be. You know, it could be 60 minutes, it could be 18, just whatever, and tell it where you want it to start and click Generate LTC. And that will uh, allow you to download a zip file that you can unzip, and it's just a wave. So pretty standard audio file, which is what I'm playing here. Now, I had a problem in that all the software on the computer can't hear what's going out of the speaker, so that wouldn't be helpful. So I downloaded a piece of software called Loopback. This is from Rogue Amoeba. I'm on the trial mode. Ideally, you'd want to pay them for that. Or there is a similar piece of software called Soundflower. Both of these are Mac 
pieces of software. There are also Windows ones. Uh, Soundflower isn't as robust as this, but it is open source. So if you have no budget, maybe that's the way to go. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to make sure that the output device is loopback audio here from my music source. And I'm going to make sure that it's receiving from loopback audio. I can choose one or channel one or channel two if I was uh, sending, let's say, a pad on channel two that I'd want channel one selected, etc. Tell it how many frames per second I had set here in LTC2. And the offset. Now this is how many... Um, seconds off from what you uh, see. So I've got this set to 3600. So watch this down here. As soon as I hit enter, this initial one is going to go away. And see how it did? Well, notice that I started this at um, 1 hour 0 seconds Actually, maybe that was one day, one hour, zero hours, zero seconds, and zero frames. So that's why I have uh, set the offset here to 3600. If I wanted to go back and change this to zero zeros, I wouldn't need to do that. This basically changes when these things start. So I hit enter there, and now that's good to go. What I can do here is as long as I'm clicking and holding on this, you'll be able to hear the audio. And I don't know that you'll be able to hear it here in my studio, but I'm going to go ahead and start it. And click on this and hear it. You might, might hear that off in the distance. So really annoying kind of sound. It's not really meant for people to listen to. That's just to prove that you're actually hearing it and notice that this is set to play. If you click on it, you can unengage it or you can start it. So let's go back here to the beginning and keep that paused. So now it's set to stop. I'm gonna minimize this and now we can see here in uh, ProPresenter what's going on. So I'm gonna go here and then I'm gonna hit play and this first cue is going to fire here in just a couple of seconds. And it did. Now I've set these to fire every five seconds, so I expect that this one will fire. Okay, and then this one, when we get to 1822, and it did, and so on. So that's how you can control that uh, with an audio file sent into your ProPresenter computer or from other software if you've got something like Soundflower or Loopback um, in 7.10. One other thing that I wanted to tell you is notice how, as I say, this started off. We go back to the beginning and play it and pause it here real quick, it starts off here. Well, instead of doing an offset here, like I showed you just a second ago, I do also have another option. And that is I can change the time it starts here. So if I do that, notice that it changes down here as well, and I get the identical results. So just to show you, we go back here, and at 5 seconds, this should change, and it did. And then at 12 seconds, this should change again, just to show you, not using my hands, and so on. So you've got those two options of how to do it in ProPresenter 7.10. If you like this content, you'd probably like my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start Quote course. So head on over to tdm.fyi slash pro, the number 7, and quick. 
give me your name and email address and I'll give you more great content like this in the form of a quick start course. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.